what goes into making a church service? What goes into a sermon series? Today on Life Talks, we're going to take you behind the scenes so you can see what Pastor Jason and I do on a weekly basis. <laughs> now, now it, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, this is going to be interesting because I think there's so many things that just we do second nature. We don't even think about it. Yeah, I'm actually a little nervous because I don't know that I... <laughs> know what to say because it's just instinctive now yeah so so i think if someone followed you around all week and someone followed me around all week and Mm -hmm. and just saw what went into a sunday morning Mm -hmm. like that that hour and 20 minutes ormond dan preaches an hour i was thinking but i wasn't gonna say it (laughs) he's not here to defend himself but we're gonna we're gonna poke him we're gonna poke him anyways um like there there are things that you and i do so that when we do lead the liturgy mm-hmm. on Sunday mornings, not not only are we prepared, uh, you know, emotionally, but also spiritually, and mm-hmm. and that there is and practically and practically, yeah. right? Um, I think there is a value in certain people in certain groups within Christianity of, you know, where's the Holy Spirit? And mm-hmm. and again, I. Yeah, there are times when the Holy like we had a Holy Spirit moment a couple Sundays ago when when Tarsha shared her testimony. Mm-hmm. You guys had a final song planned mm-hmm. after that, and right. I think everyone recognized. I I think this is like right. what we just what we just witnessed here and saw and experienced the worship of God, our God through Tarsha's testimony and song and it. Let's just dismiss right now. Mm-hmm, right. <laughs> you know what right, I mean? Like, right. like there are times. We, made, we pivoted. We adapted in the moment. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes you do do that because, yep. yeah, the, the, the spirit of God just reveals to everyone, I think it's time to, to do something different. Mm-hmm. Um, but the spirit of God also uses order in worship. Right. Yeah. I, th- I I think it's more of us than it is the spirit in those or the Holy Spirit mm. in those moments of improvisation. Yes. You know, it's not like the Holy Spirit says, I think I'm going to do something different in their midst today. Yeah. You know, it's just, yeah. you know, despite our best plan, sometimes we realize I missed that. The spirit has mm. been moving, but the, yes. I shouldn't have had a, a, a second song or yes. whatever. It wasn't. You know, Again, one of the most worshipful church experiences I've ever had was at an Anglican church in Oxford. And it was high church liturgy. Mm. It, it was not loosey goosey mm-hmm. at all. Right. But but I walked away from there saying, I will never forget this church service because God met me in, in mm-hmm. a very special way during that hour and mm-hmm. hour long service. Um, and for him, that was a, a predetermined appointment. That's right. Yeah. For yeah, you, yes, it seemed yes, like a, a sudden yes, yes. Impro- improvised move of the spirit. Yes. But for him, it was predetermined. Yeah. Okay. So. Let's back up a little bit. Typically, what happens is you and I we have a worship we have a weekly meeting where we talk about things every yep. week. But there's every also a worship forecasting meeting, and typically at the worship forecasting meeting, we talk about um, upcoming series. Yeah, right. Yes. Um, and so, like typically, you and I will meet. I'll say I have this idea, mm-hmm. and again, where these ideas come from, I I do believe I pray, I ask God, but there's also just kind of this sense of. Where's our church at? Or where is culture at? Or what are the questions that are driving people right now? And um, I, I ha- so I, like when we did Daniel a couple of years ago, 2022, I was just getting this sense of people feeling the uncertainty mm-hmm. of, of the world, the future. And, you know, as much as I would pray, I had a couple of other ideas. You would hear me share different, mm-hmm. different ideas. And eventually the more I would pray, it was kind of like, Something would just kind of rise, and I just couldn't get my mind off of that one mm-hmm. book of the Bible. Yeah, we all we all uh, within the pastoral staff, probably even uh, generally speaking, the church staff at large, we get a peek into how you keep us updated. That I am not procrastinating; mm-hmm. I am thinking yeah. through this, and yeah. this is where I am with the thoughts. Yeah. And so we get us we get to see it evolve. Yeah, until and, you and, arrive. And I'm a very collaborative type of leader. Yeah. I share these ideas because many times. I do because I want feedback. Yeah, I want to feedback he- can be a catalyst. I want to hear from you. I want to hear okay, what, what when I say this, what are your thoughts? And so you and I have had many of those, you know, ping pong moments mm-hmm. where we just feel like, oh yeah, that would be great. Oh, what if we did this? And mm-hmm. we just kind of see what God does in that moment. Um, and so typically, what happens is I, there's an idea, we bring it, and then we kind of formulate, okay, how do we want this? Um, the theme, like we want there to be an aesthetic approach mm-hmm. to our our worship as well it's yes. not just 
you know, blank slate, we have backdrops and we mm-hmm. have images. And we had, when we did Ruth, we had wheat and mm-hmm. or bar, to represent, you know, the, the barley fields. Mm-hmm. And um, th- there's other things that we have done to draw attention to the, the theme of the series. Right. Right. So for you, what goes it for your mind? How do you approach the aesthetic side of the worship service? Once I um, have come to believe that I have an understanding of what your primary takeaway yeah. is going to be for the yeah. congregation, because I, I do approach that the worship service or the service of worship rather is for the benefit of the people, not in a selfish way but in a transformative way inspired mm, by god yeah. so what do you want them to take away once i feel like i've arrived at an understanding of that um then first and foremost the church uh, is a singing organization so music is one of the very um is the first consideration because mm. it's i mean it, we sing the yes. church sings yes. we, we should sing more than yes. any other organization so start looking through through songs and the purpose of course of songs is that we are very as a species, we are heavily influenced by um, external uh, sensory, sensorial mm-hmm. biofeedback, if you will. Mm-hmm. You know, so our senses. What do we see uh, that might point us to God? What do we hear that might point us to God? Uh, what do we, you know, even Lord's Supper taste? Mm-hmm. What do we taste mm-hmm. that points us to God? So, but music being that primary medium, I start mm-hmm. thinking of songs. Um, through the stage design, what can visually display or invoke or intrigue the thoughts, the internal yeah. thoughts of the worshiper towards yeah. your takeaway. Yeah. The video backgrounds on songs can be based in part on the content of the individual song, but we try to make those video backgrounds based upon the stage design again yes. the takeaway. Yeah. Um, because if we approach corporate, if we approach worship as corporate, uh, with the illustration that we are all individual members of the body of Christ. That means, you know, Paul says some of us are hands, some of us are feet, yeah. some of us are whatever. And when I was an uh, education major in college, uh, the same illustration was used using different words. We all per- learn differently and we all function differently That's according right. to the way that we learn. So some learn visually, some learn yes. auditorially, yes. kinetically, all those things, yeah. or kinesthetically. Um, so, you know, I try to create, if for lack of a better term, a lesson plan. You yeah, know, the, serve, yeah. The, worship, the service of worship is a lesson plan, yeah. and the curriculum is the scripture, mm. and the subject matter of the day was determined mm. by you. Yeah, and then out of that, there's all kinds of other things we yeah. have to decide too. So, you know, as we put together, kind of the you you have ideas about stage backdrop or mm-hmm. um, the even the bumper video, the right? bumper the, video. The bumper, the, 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 we talk about which like, that's a, a modern construct, isn't right? It? Yeah. But, but I but wasn't again, raised with bumper videos. No, no. <laughs> but but again, a lot of times it's it's what are the themes we want? Everything we do is purposeful. So yes. we even talk about we don't want what the, is that bumper video going to be? What is what's the feel need to be? What is mm-hmm. it? You know, what's the scenes? What are the, you know? So we what's the imagery? What's the poster yes, in the lobby? Yes, mm-hmm. we talk about all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, nothing is is intentionally left to chance, and nothing is selected exclusively because it's clever or exclusively right. because oh. it's pretty or exclusively. Or I because saw a it's church good. do this. Like we 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 might hear about other churches do, but we do not right. copycat in a way that's like no we. We try to think through. Yeah, there's a reason why we want. Yeah, we want people to respond to this. So it, novelty is not our what we're looking for. No, we're not no. looking for novelty. Yeah. So so after we kind of get the big picture mm-hmm. of the the series of what we want to be, we I typically have a sermon schedule. Yes. We I map it out. Dates and dates, teaching scriptures, pastors. who's teaching. Mm-hmm. I, I cover all of that kind of stuff, and mm-hmm. and so that way everyone knows. And that, again, there's times we have to sh- shuffle that around. Um, and then and then let's talk about more the weekly. So the the weekly actual routine of it. Mm-hmm. You walk me through for you, kind of the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, and then, so. <laughs> and then I'll walk through my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we'll kind of go through the back half of the week. Yeah, I'm sure that we would both agree that it fills in our lives of serving the church, and we do. That's how we would yeah. contextualize yes. it. We serve the church. We our our role exists to serve, but in the role of serving the church, it feels like Sunday comes every day. Yes. Yeah. You know, every day, yes. I'm thinking Sunday, yes. Sunday, yeah. Sunday. Uh, but the way we approach that that every day Sunday is. Um, probably quite different where yours mm-hmm. is uh, 
not exclusively primary preparation, you shift into nearly individual preparation. Oh, 100%. It's, it's, yes. it's you and on you. Yes. Um, I am not a solo artist. Nope. Yeah, and, uh, I, I don't sing all the songs nor play all the songs. So I yeah. shift into how can I bring others into this You're very team-focused. Very yes. team-focused. The task gets accomplished through collaborative efforts yes. of others. So that is both an art and a science mm. you know, of who are the singers, who's available, um, who are the musicians, who are the – AVL has become a huge piece of worship yes. over the last 20-plus yes. years. AVL for yeah. those other people. All those people. Who no, are they? what does AVL mean? Oh, sorry, sorry. Audio, <laughs> video, lighting. Yes, yes, audio, video, yeah. lighting. Yeah, so yeah. I have to start thinking – uh, audio, video, lighting people, singers, musicians, stage managers, and, and, and now live stream and live stream, which yes. started the pandemic years definitely ago. made that yes. a, a. It used to be a nice to have, and now it's like seen as a must yeah, have. Yeah. And uh, so, who all is available to make all of this a reality? You yeah, know, um, um, who can produce the vision? Who can mm. make it something that is actually experienceable? Yeah. How, how soon do you? give your team the songs like well, how, how far ahead do you guys we have our ideals and our yeah. ideal is two weeks in advance now okay. some would say they want it more than that um i've not consistently seen any benefit from yeah. it being more than that three four weeks out just uh, enables a lot of procrastination uh, <laughs> <laughs> what you're saying is they don't really do anything they don't really they'll, they'll 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 say they needed it you know it's it's like the spirit of adam and eve why, why don't you why why did you sing this wrong well lord lord it's the fact that you didn't give us the songs but uh, a week ago yeah yeah right these songs are not uh, operas yeah, yeah 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 so uh, ideally two weeks in advance um and we're also what so we'll send out we use software now called Planning Center Online. Excellent. That, yeah. uh, so it's very, very, very functional, very useful. So it sends out all these mm. digital invites to nearly 30 some people. And then we wait for their responses to those invites. Uh, the problem can be if one song is only singable sung well by one particular singer and that singer's mm -hmm. not available mm -hmm. and then you pivot you adapt yeah. it's a very fluid yeah. process with sunday not the arrival of sunday is not fluid like yes. it's a hard deadline yeah. Yeah. and then there's midweek rehearsals yeah there's, so tell me tell me about the let's because again i think most people have no clue that mm -hmm. that you you probably do a midweek rehearsal what goes into that midweek i mean obviously you're running through the actual Mid service but, but right. how do you prepare for that how do you lead your team through that so midweek rehearsals are for the primary purpose of musical preparation mm. uh, we bring some of our production team our AVL team audio video lighting team is present for midweek but they are not the primary uh, emphasis the primary emphasis is on musical preparation so we have to make sure all the rehearsal packets are ready the PDFs for those who use iPads for music mm -hmm. there the gear has to be functioning I speak in the ideal I can tell you every Wednesday is like <laughs> Herding cats. Yeah, exactly. It's like brunch is being served Saturday, and we just discovered there's no eggs or bacon, <laughs> right? So we're always adapting to something. You know, the drummer calls that I can't make it tonight. Yeah, well, then yeah. you know that changes the atmosphere. But Wednesday yeah. night is a is a midweek rehearsal. We have dinner together mm. from six to seven, and then we rehearse from seven to eight thirty ish. Yeah, um, correcting slides, correcting, attempting to correct harmonies and rhythms and tempos and and yeah. all the things. Um, so on Sunday, the goal is that when Sunday morning arrives, we all arrive. Some arrive at 630 in the morning. Everybody should be here by seven. We run it again with everybody. And we consider mm. it our dress rehearsal. All the production teams present. Mm. We bring you in yep. for a sound check. Yep. Yeah, the yep. scripture reader comes in for a sound mm -hmm. check. Um, so that when the congregation arrives, it seems um, seamless. And mm -hmm. it is hopefully um minimally flawed <laughs> well yeah i think that's one of the things that i mean and and you do an amazing job of covering if there are flaws because sometimes you see things that nobody else does yes i, I mean it's yeah. just that's just reality but you do I, I think one of your greatest strengths is you do have a very good job you do a very good job of preparing your team for what they need to do Yep. Because yep. You, Josh can testify this. Yep. He's he's an experienced worship leader. Yep. Um, and a very talented yes, pianist and yes. musician. But, but who needs to play more often because <laughs> I miss him. <laughs> Josh. Oh, I didn't know this was going to turn this way. <laughs> this whole podcast was really an intervention. 
<laughs> we'll talk after the show. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be back. Yeah. So, Praise the Lord. Yeah. So one of the things that can I have been around for too long is the the distractions. Yes. Slides that aren't up ready or they're the wrong slide or the mic's not, not working or yeah. something. I mean, error. Con- it, it seems to be the, the, the error. pervasive and, and, and presence of error. I think that error. one of the things like, I just so appreciate you about Jason is probably I can cannot count on one hand the amount of kind of like bumps I've experienced here in six years. What? No. Yeah. No. And what? What? And we can count that many per Sunday. <laughs> 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 what I'm saying is. You don't see that on a the, the, when you're sitting there and you're yes. observing everything, you don't you don't see yeah. anything like if that. If there's musical error, it's pro, it's more perceived yes. by certain musicians, yes. but probably not the congregation. So the yeah, great. Josh, you're you're like, oh, I see it, I hear it. No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the egregious things that people are like. Why is that person singing right. that, that or or that 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 guy playing guitar like i can't yeah. tell how many times yeah. i've been in a worship service problems like a video accidentally they looping will, they or, will stop yeah. mid-song hey i think you're in d yeah you we, know what i mean we've and had I, a couple have had to completely stop everything change your cape yeah or whatever, so, yeah. so that happens so rarely it's mm-hmm. because you do a great job of preparation um I, i'll just with we only have a few minutes left but let me just tell you what i do mm-hmm. to yes. prepare because i i have a you, like you said, I have a much different preparation. I think I've actually recorded a couple podcasts with Dan on mm-hmm. my how I prepare a sermon. But but I typically, um, you know, read through the, the passage multiple times. I will do research on Logos and Blue Letter Bible and just and look into words and look into um, exegetical papers. Sometimes I, I will I will do a lot of things to commentaries. Um, and I'm just gathering data. I'm gathering information. I'm gathering, like, what is being said here? And at the end of the day, I'm trying to say, okay, what is the main point of this entire text? Mm-hmm. And th- that's the first chunk of what I'm trying to do is just just formulate what this is really about. The second part of my preparation of a sermon is how, so what? You mm-hmm. have to answer the so what question. Yeah. So what this is about God being a mighty fortress, what does that have to do with anyone today? Like, mm-hmm. how do how is this? How do I build the bridge from the biblical world into the to the Lake Norman world of 2024? So that yeah. is somehow it is important and is very uh, relevant. Yes. But it, if you don't know how to communicate the relevance, it does. Just just reciting exegetical facts about the text is not right. Doing a good job of preaching. Right. You have got to make it. You know, you've got to connect with your audience in a way to say this is why this is important Mm -hmm. the third component and this is the one that probably is always the hardest for me and that is this text has got to change my life Mm. i have preached sermons where it's like i know i do a a a, um a a good job of declaring what the bible says and sharing the relevant relevance Mm mm-hmm what I sometimes have to continually check myself is, am I worshiping? Mm. Am I, have I been changed by mm. this text this mm. week? And that's harder to do, especially when you're doing it week mm-hmm. after week mm-hmm. after week. Am I worshiping God right now? Um, that, that to me is probably one of the biggest confrontations that the Spirit of God is continually working on me to make sure, don't just get up there and preach these three points. And typically, it's it's always on Saturday when the Spirit of God does His greatest work on me. Saturday mm. is a work day for me because mm. I'm mm. continually going over the sermon. I'm tweaking things. I'm changing things. I'm rewriting things. I'm I'm practicing saying things. Um, and then there is invariably that time where the Spirit of God is like, "And what about you? Mm-hmm. How how is this impacting your life?" Um, but there are times I just I don't get there. Yeah, and, and it's so. How do you prepare on a spiritual level for what you do on a very practical level? I would say one of the things I've picked up about you uh, is just how well read you are. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've read mm-hmm. innumerable for me books. You're always mm-hmm. throwing out a book. Mm-hmm. Have you seen this book? Here, yeah. take this book, yeah. kind of thing. So your constant pursuit of knowledge has uh, helped. Has 
helped me develop even more my mm. constant pursuit of knowledge. Mm-hmm. So you've even gifted me, you mm. know, a book. Yeah. Um, so I think that that, in addition to how I teach uh, my voice students, because I teach voice yes. on the side, yeah. um, how to connect with a musical work. I said it's very important mm. that, that you as the singer connect with emotionally connect with this musical work because yes. uh, we need our instrumentalists and I love our instrumentalists but our instrumentalists don't communicate language mm. uh, they're not telling a story right. they can That's accentuate right. a story they can create an atmosphere they can uh, influence emotion but singers sing words and uh, and if you don't connect because music can act music can actually distract from the words That's right. because of the long pauses That's right. that mm-hmm. you know just the way it's we've, written, we've all seen that we've all seen the YouTube clip of the oceans drum solo uh-huh. guy yeah i mean <laughs> if, if you, you haven't find it <laughs> just just type in the youtube oceans fail <laughs> fail yes. drum solo just like yes. a worse of fails there's some great <laughs> yes. instagram channel yeah so Sorry. instrumentalists yeah. now i agree instrumentalists definitely yeah. can cause the human mind to disconnect mm-hmm. from the narrative mm-hmm. yeah. but the way in which the narrative is written with um rest and and mm, such just mm-hmm. for the vocalist we can take such a a musical break we can break up a line for the sake of the song in a way that we're not tracking with the story yeah um so i encourage singers my sing my voice students lift the lyrics from the page take them out of the sheet music mm. literally write them down mm. and this is what i do as well for yeah. worship songs yeah i write them down so i can see just the message that i mm. will be saying mm. Um, and then I find a way to emotionally connect with that. There's yeah. some worship songs I don't connect with. Yeah. Um, I don't connect with, and I ran out of that grave. I know it's a super, <laughs> a super popular song. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's theologically inaccurate, uh, but its illustration is so specific while trying to be abstract. It doesn't align with my personal. Yeah. It's a highly personal yeah, testimony yeah. song. So I've learned to smile and fake it. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, it is a and challenge. I, and I know what that feels like because they, you can talk to my wife and she, and I will tell her there are times I'm I'm getting ready for Sunday and I say this is a really good text. It's just not like it's just not connecting with me. Like mm-hmm. it's hard, it's hard for me to get excited about the sermon, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Mm-hmm. There's no emotion. We need that emotion. And we connection. need it. And so yeah. I'm always asking I'm like God, you've got to help me mm. because I know people can tell when it when it does connect or not, mm-hmm. you know. Um listen, we are out of time, but this mm-hmm. has been a really great I've enjoyed it. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, opportunity I think for our church to hear the the purposeful plan of our liturgical philosophy. Mm-hmm. Um, before we say, you know, before we sign off, before we say amen, amen, <laughs> um, g- what's one last kind of message you would want to share with our church mm-hmm. about prepare for them to prepare for Sunday? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, and I think the answer is in one of the words you use in the question, preparation, uh, as much as we prepare for corporate worship. Uh, I hope individuals are preparing for that as well. Mm. How are you preparing? If you even look at the ancient liturgies of the Hebrew, uh, of the Hebrew people, they sang songs. There, some of the psalms are called psalms of ascent. Yeah. They were singing before they arrived at the yes. temple yes. It, to prepare themselves. Yeah. So take advantage of listening to the song sets that uh, Abby puts out, so that you can know them. You know, yeah. say it's a new song. I'm unfamiliar with it. Uh, that's your your accountable for that, not me. Yeah, Learn yeah, the song, yeah. you know, it, in this age of, of accessibility. Look at the scripture references we've put up on the screens. Yes. Read the scripture yes. while we're singing. Yeah. All of these things are nourishment for us. So yeah. prepare yourself. It's not, I don't see myself any longer as responsible for your individual worship. That's right. You're just responsible. It's a, a quick behind the scenes before we go. Let me also just honor Jason real quick because on our first Sunday here my wife and I immediately were like wow this guy that looks just like Jesus sings really really well like that was immediately <laughs> poor Jesus <laughs> <laughs> and and I know that's really clear to people yeah. Jason has a really uniquely amazing voice and, yes. and, and there's a lot of things that, that are captivating about that but as someone who's been now worked behind the scenes with Jason for years and years in multiple countries now I, there is an amazing leader here yes. that is so much beyond musical talent and singing talent. The kinds of leadership 
decisions and problems that yeah. Jason has to work through are really yeah. complicated and difficult. And I have rarely worked with such a good leader. So we are mm. really lucky to have him here, even though he's an amazing singer and all that. Yes, That's yes. not the main thing. He's a fantastic <laughs> yeah. leader. And yeah, we talk about you, how you and Dan are great all the time, yes. as we should. Yeah. Jason's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I, I one thing, one of the you. best compliments I can give you, Jason. And I know you hate this. Yeah, I'm like, this feels very... like having happy birthday sung <laughs> to me. It's like I don't know where to look, what to do. <laughs> look down. I, yeah. This is I've said this to elders. I've said this to other people. When I when Jason has something that he oversees, I never have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's one of the best compliments I can give you. Yeah, well, so, and and well said. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to give a final word if you're. A life fellowship attender, even if you're another another church, um, I'm going to challenge you to get to church on time for four Sundays in a row, mm. and and I want you to just experience the church the way it's supposed to be experienced. Mm. I, w- I want you to go through the services the way you're supposed to. It's kind of like you might have a bad experience doing it. Well, it's because you didn't you do it the right way. So what I would say is, if you could take this challenge. And if you're sitting there and saying, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna go to four Sundays in a row, and I'm going to go from the first song to the last song, sit in my seat, or stand in that place to experience the fullness of the liturgy that we have purposely planned for mm. the, our church body, I believe you will have a different perspective of our mm. church. Mm. I genuinely believe that. Yeah. Because people come in late, people leave early, and it's just like... You want to wring their neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Transformed one way or the other. Uh, all right. So this has been a great conversation on liturgy. I hope this has really helped educate you about what, if you're a listener, how we do things and the purpose for why we lead worship and why we have worship services at Life Fellowship. So if you have questions, always suggestions, email us at lifetalks at lifecharlotte.com. We thank you so much for joining us on Life Talks. We'll talk to you next time.